Over the past 15 years or so, there's been much interest in vitamin D and increasing use of vitamin D supplementation by the population. And so we were interested in studying more about whether this increased supplement use has led to increasing vitamin D levels in the population as well as perhaps increased toxicity from vitamin D as well. Acute toxicity from vitamin D results from very high levels of vitamin D in the blood and that leads to what we call hypercalcemia or a high blood calcium that we determine by measuring the calcium level in the blood and that can have serious consequences in terms of uh, even be life-threatening. The Rochester Epidemiology Project is a large data, medical database related to the residents of Olmsted County, Minnesota primarily. And that follows those residents of Olmsted County over more than 40 years in terms of having their medical records that are all linked and subjects who are part of the Olmsted residents in Olmsted County who've given consent to use their medical records data for the purposes of research are included in this study and it includes over 95 percent of the population. So the unique features about that are that it provides an opportunity to study the rates of occurrence of various diseases over time in a particular population. We identified residents of Olmsted County over a 10-year period between 2002 and 2011 and who had measurements of their vitamin D levels and we found over 20,000 subjects who had their vitamin D levels measured and identified those who had high vitamin D levels which we defined as more than 50 and the units for that measurement are nanograms per milliliter and I mention that because there are other units for measuring vitamin D, so it's important when you're comparing numbers to compare apples with apples. We found that 8% of the people who had their vitamin D levels measured had levels more than 50, and about less than 1% had levels over 100. Yet we found that even those with high levels of vitamin D over 50, there was not an increased risk of hypercalcemia or elevated serum calcium with increasing levels of vitamin D. We found as well that women and those over age 65 were at the highest risk of having vitamin D levels over 50 and that's a group that often takes uh, vitamin D supplementation as well so that's not an unexpected finding and the actual occurrence of levels over 50 increased over that 10-year period from 9 up to 233 per 100,000 people. We were surprised by that degree of dramatic increase in uh, vitamin D. And we also noted that only one case among over those 10 years uh, that we were able to identify had true acute vitamin D toxicity with a level of 364 for their vitamin D. And that person had been taking vitamin D supplements of 50,000 units every day for more than three months along with uh, calcium supplementation as well which would make that hypercalcemia or elevated blood calcium even worse. I think several things would be important to take home from this. One is that acute toxicity from vitamin D supplementation is very rare and it is fairly safe to take in the short term. However, there is not enough information about the long-term effects of having vitamin D levels over 50. And the Institute of Medicine has expressed some concern about the possibility of adverse effects related to long-term vitamin D uh, levels over 50, including an increased risk of falls or fractures, some cancers, cardiovascular disease, and even death. However, the risk of those is much greater if your vitamin D level is too low. 
So there, uh, it is good to be taking a vitamin D supplement if you need it, but more is not necessarily better. The level of vitamin D supplementation that will generally give you a, a vitamin D level of more than 50 is, or up at about 50, is 4,000 units a day. So my advice for doctors would be if your patients are taking more than 4,000 units a day, that it would be reasonable to check their blood vitamin D levels to make sure that they are not too high. And it is also important for doctors to ask their patients about the doses of vitamin D supplements that they are using because even capsules as containing as much as 50,000 units of vitamin D are available without prescription and they, if taken on a daily basis, could lead to toxicity as we observed in that one case. I think further study needs to be done on the long-term effects of vitamin D levels over 50. Even though they've found some associations with adverse events, it may be that people who are sicker tend to take more vitamin D supplements, and that may be why that association between higher vitamin D levels and certain uh, illnesses exists. So association between two things doesn't mean that one caused the other.